What's up YouTube, Joe again from Grindhouse Grotto and today I'm going to be reviewing 1983's Sleepaway Camp. Alright, so this is going to be a two-part review so I'm going to go ahead and cover the Sleepaway Camp Collector's Edition from Screen Factory. It was released about two years ago and then I'm going to share my thoughts on the film, kind of give a quick rundown of the plot. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the Blu-ray. So this came out about two years ago and <clears throat> Screen Factory did a pretty good, uh, pretty good release of this. It uh, has the Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. Comes with a sleeve. So similar to all the other Screen Factory releases, uh, if you get it within the first three months, then you get the uh, limited edition sleeve that comes with it. And it's got newly commissioned artwork, which I think is pretty cool. Open it up. And then you have the original theatrical cover art as the alternative which I actually prefer this. If this was the sleeve, I would have that as a sleeve because I love this cover art. Uh, flip it open. Comes with two discs. Blu-ray and DVD, each on its own separate disc. Pretty cool. <coughs> um, it's got the original artwork on each disc, which is pretty cool. I just absolutely love that artwork. So as far as special features go, um, this release has a new 2K scan from the original camera negative. has new commentary with stars Felisa Rose and Jonathan Tierstan. Original commentary with director-writer Robert Hiltzik, Felisa Rose, and webmaster Jeff Hayes. New interviews with cast and crew, Sleepaway Camp scrapbook, short film Judy by Jeff Hayes, a theatrical trailer, and more. This release is a really solid release. Um, I felt like it was kind of, um, I think it's a good release, but I feel like it could use a little bit more special features. Um, it's just basically a few commentaries, um, and then a couple interviews of the cast, but pretty much other than that, you're not really getting too much. <clears throat> they really stretch this thin as far as a, uh, a collector's edition could go. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a really solid release, and I recommend it for anybody that's, uh, you know, doesn't own this film, but... You know, if you compare it to the other collector's editions that they've released in the past, uh, this is this is a pretty bare bones release. Um, all in all, I think it's an excellent release. Uh, I've watched a few of the, uh, the I've watched one of the interviews and I've listened to one of the commentaries. Commentary is really good, really informative. So I definitely think they uh, did a good job with the commentary. Um, the interviews are pretty good. Um, I don't think it's really anything that we haven't heard before. <clears throat> Just kind of like what they thought of the film and you know. Where they what their stance is on the film today. That's pretty much what you're getting with these interviews. But all in all, I think this is a pretty solid release from Scream Factory, and I highly recommend picking it up. All right, guys. So Sleepaway Camp is one of those films on my list, on my short list that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. Um, I just haven't got around to it because I'm wanting to rewatch these films several times, kind of make sure I have the most information that I can provide for you all. And um, Sleepaway Camp is a film that I saw about four years ago, I want to say. It's not one that I originally had saw, you know, growing up. It's not a slasher that I've known for a long time. But it is definitely near and dear to my heart. Uh, when I saw this film for the first time, I instantly fell in love with it. Uh, it reminds me kind of a cross between The Burning and the original Friday the 13th. So you get the camp shenanigans that you get in The Burning. <clears throat> and then you also kind of get that murder mystery you know, the who done it from the original Friday the 13th. And it's, you know, it's it's a body count film. So, you know, they, they basically pace the kills out. So they're basically, the kills are every, you know, so often, which I really do enjoy about that. It keeps the momentum of the film going, keeps you kind of sucked in. But what this film really gives you the most, I feel like, is the whole camp atmosphere. And if you were a kid growing up and you went to a summer camp at all, then you kind of you're going to have some, some, some strong feelings for this film. It's going to remind you of, of being a kid and being at summer camp. And I think that adds to the charm of the film. At least for me, I remember when I was a kid growing up, and I used to go to summer camp, you know, <clears throat> not every year, but, you know, most years I would go to summer camp. And I remember all the little things that we did at camp, you know, all the different camp shenanigans and pranks that we played on each other. And this, similar to Burning, that's what you get. Um, you got a lot of <clears throat> build-up, character development, um, you feel really invested to the characters, uh, and then when, you know, the big reveal happens at the end, which I'll get to, uh, you're just completely blown away. 
And so that's that's kind of what draw, um, drew me to this film when I saw, saw it for the first time. So just to kind of go over the plot quickly. Um, so what you get with this film is basically um, it's not like other slasher films that you've seen before. Uh, so we don't have a, you know, a, a slasher that we know, okay, this is a slasher. This is a slasher who done it. We don't know who the killer is until the end of the movie. And I'm sure pretty much most of you all know, or most of you that have been, are watching this review probably already know who the killer is. Um, it's pretty clear. But they made a good attempt to kind of have some red herrings in the film, make you really think who the killer is. You don't really want to believe that it is Angela. I mean, let's just, you know, let's just get the, you know, the, 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 the elephant out of the room, okay? It's Angela, she's the killer. Um, I mean, you kind of, even watching this film, you kind of already know something's not right with this girl. Um, throughout the film, you see her. She just seems a little off, and... Even though they're real subtle with the red herrings, it's pretty clear that it's her, okay? They're, every person that comes in contact or has a negative contact with Angela gets picked off one by one. So all the signs are leading to her, but, you know, you just can't believe that it was just, you know, young, sweet girl, Angela, at summer camp, you know, you just look at her and she's just, you know, innocent or the innocent Angela. You wouldn't believe that it was her. And then that kind of adds to the ending of the film where we get the big reveal that everybody knows. Um, so let's just go ahead and dive right into this plot. So this plot takes place in uh, 1975. <clears throat> we see a young Angela, uh, her, her father, her, her you know homosexual father, and the cousin, one of the cousins. And they are out in the lake, whatever, and they're you know, on this little craft. And Angela and her cousin basically play a prank on um, the father. They're both capsizes, and you know, and they're in the water, and there's some teenagers are in this boat in the lake, and <clears throat> something, and they're searing jams, and you know, they're heading straight towards Angela, her father and the cousin, and they can't, the boat's just not, you know, it's stuck in this, in this position, so it's going straight towards them. It basically, you know, hits, hits the father and kills the father and one of the kids. We don't really know which kid died. But one of the kids died, <clears throat> the father dies. We flash forward, and basically, um, Angela has now been adopted by, so we just basically assume that um, the cousin died. So Angela gets adopted by the aunt, one of the aunts. And the aunt takes him in. Angela grows up with her other cousin, and everything seems on the up and up. Now, Martha, the aunt, sends Angela and her cousin to summer camp. To Camp Arwalk. And they go to summer camp. You know, we see the camp shenanigans going on. There's like a love interest between uh, <clears throat> Angela's cousin, and then there's this girl who's kind of like uh, the, the prototypical, you know, camp, camp bitch, okay? So she's kind of like, um, you know, basically like, uh, you know, uh, picking on all the other girls. Uh, you know, we get the we get the, the the prototypical you know camp snob, camp jocks, so on and so forth. Angela is the quiet, you know, innocent innocent Angela. Um, people are just are not understanding why she's almost like a mute for most of the film. Doesn't really talk much. The cousin is really the only one that kind of understands her. Um, and so there's another boy at the camp who kind of has an interest in Angela. And so he's he's really trying to woo her, trying to get her to come out of her shell. And we see that a little bit. We see Angela kind of coming out of her shell a little bit. And all of a sudden these murders start happening, okay? There's this creepy cook early on in the movie. He's kind of like a, a pedophile. He's says he talks about the little kids coming in and arriving on the bus and how um, you know, these kids look the same every year. It's just really creepy. You kind of kind of know that is he's a kind of a pedophile. But anyways, he's kind of like the first kill, and then you learn pretty much early on that this is a body count film. Um, people start dying one by one. Like I said earlier, everybody that comes in contact with Angela meets a gruesome demise. And so, you know, everything's clearly pointed on her. But they do make some effort to have some red herrings in there to kind of try to make you think that it could be somebody else. 
but it's pretty clear as day. Um, now, you're, you're wondering at the same time when you're watching this film, how could Angela kill these people? I mean, she's small, she's not very strong. Um, that's kind of like hinting at the ending. How could a young girl do this? Okay? So, this film is interesting because I feel like it explores our... Maybe our inner bias. Now, during the 70s and 80s, uh, homosexuality, um, that sort of thing was very taboo. So I think that played on that a little bit. And it was like, you know, if you were a kid growing up in, in the 70s or 80s and you were, you know, you came forward, you came out of the closet and you were homosexual, you were basically disowned from your family, you were an outcast of society. Um, so I think that has, it's a little bit of a um, social commentary in this movie. Uh, I, it's interesting because you just wouldn't see that in movies back then. I mean, it, if you, it was a horror movie, it was just basically slice and dice, killing people. And I think this, you know, I don't mind it. I don't mind that that is social commentary. I think it's, it's okay. Um, it definitely adds to the reveal at the end. It's the shock factor. Like, holy shit. And if you were, like I said, if you were somebody growing up in the 70s and 80s, You'd be like, oh my god, you'd be blown away at the end of this movie. So, you got that going on. Um, basically, in a nutshell, uh, the scene that we see earlier in the movie, the beginning part of the movie where, you know, the boat capsizes and uh, the father, Angela, and the cousin get hit. And we don't know which one of the kids died, but then we see Angela, so we just assume that, you know, Angela survived it and she got adopted. Well, that's not actually Angela. The real Angela died. And she was raised, that the boy, the cousin, was, you know, was raised to be a girl. And the real cousin that we see go to camp with Angela, he has no idea. He's just like, that's my brother, but, you know, uh, I had no idea that, you know, she was uh, <laughs> being raised as a girl. So, you know, the mother is kind of twisted. She, you know, she always wanted to have a girl, and so she basically dresses... Um, the boy cousin as a girl and makes her think that she's a girl and uh, That's kind of why she's weird in this film, but anyways the end of the movie I'm not, I don't want to spoil it, but you get the big reveal I'm sure a lot of people have seen it, but you need to go check out the end of this movie. It's freaking absolutely crazy yeah, that's when we kind of get the reveal that Angela is not Angela. It's another boy and Yeah, go check out the end of this film all around, I think Sleepaway Camp is an amazing film. I think it's got so much going on for it. I like, I don't mind the social commentary in it. I like the kills in it. The kills are very cool. Um, I like the camp shenanigans. The camp atmosphere reminds me a lot of a kid growing up. Um, you know, it's a good film. It's just a good film to watch. You kind of just want to relax. Nothing too serious. You know, you don't really need it to, to really invest yourself too much when you're watching this film. It's just an easy film to watch. I would say this, in a lot of people's minds, this is uh, one of those slasher, slasher films of the early 80s that is pretty high on a lot of people's lists. I like this film. I wouldn't say it's in my top 10, but I think it's a really good film. I enjoy the hell of this film. I'm, it's not it's not in my top 10. I wouldn't rank this amongst, you know, The Burning, um, you know, The Friday the 13th, The ha um, Halloween, you know, all these great films. Uh, just Before Dawn, I love that film. Um, those are some of the films that I rank in my top ten. I don't see this film up there with that. I do think it's an amazing film. I think it's, if you were to structure it out to maybe a top 20, I could see this being a top 20. But I don't think it's a top 10 slasher film. It's just in my opinion. But anyways, guys, uh, that's kind of why I enjoy this film. It just really reminds me a lot of as a kid growing up. And I think that, and similar to Burning, if you've seen The Burning, that's really just the reason why people watch these films. You get that nostalgia feeling, you know, feeling like a little kid again, you know, and that's what gives this film charm, and that's why I dig it. But anyways, guys, those are my thoughts on 1983's Sleepaway Camp. Um, I want to do a review of the sequels, which I actually kind of, I know a lot of people are going to say I'm crazy, but I kind of enjoy the Sleepaway Camp sequels more than I enjoy the original film. Um, not, I... Sleepaway Camp, the original, is definitely hands down the better film out of the three. But as far as entertainment value and it being a, a more of a raw slasher, I think Sleepaway Camp 2 and Sleepaway Camp 3 have a lot more of the slasher elements. There's a lot more kills, a lot more violence, 
Um, you, you already know who the killer is. But anyways, I'll get into that when I do f uh, future reviews of those two films. But yeah, guys, those are my thoughts on the films. Um, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you're not already a subscriber, subscribe to my channel for future content. Um, I greatly, uh, greatly appreciate all support that um, anyone wants to give me. Um, as a reminder, I'm doing my 100 subscriber giveaway. So if you want to be enrolled in that, um, go ahead and comment on this video. Drop a comment on the video that I originally posted. Um, it's called, I think it's called like 100 subscriber giveaway and tour, battle tour. Yeah, go ahead and comment on that video. Uh, make sure, this is the important thing. Make sure that you have your subscribers, your subscriptions, um, viewable. I have to be able to see that you're subscribed to my channel. If I can't, then I can't enroll you in this contest. What's going to happen is, once I hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to do uh, an, an, um, an announcement video. I'm going to take all the, all the people that have subscribed to my channel from when I first started until I reached 100 subscribers. I'm going to put all their names in a uh, random name generator, and the first person it gives me is going to be the winner. And I'm going to be giving away four, uh, four movies. I'm going to be giving away the 4K release of Prometheus, uh, the Blu-ray release of The Shallows, an awesome film, the Scream Factory Collector's Edition with the sleeve of Misery, and then last but not least, one of my favorite films, the Blu-ray release of The Lost Boys. All four excellent films. They all belong in everyone's collection. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, like I said, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. And until next time, guys, take it easy.